Hi, I am Marjorie Christensen, and I am with Dr. Thomas Lindsay with the Mission Community Care Clinic in Cashers, and we're going to be discussing today Dr. Lindsay's April article in the Laurel Magazine dealing with drug addiction. And thank you so much for your time, Dr. You're Lindsay. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Um, before we get started on um, that journey, though, let's talk about you and and how you came to Cashers and the clinic here. Okay. Well, um, when I came out of residency from East Carolina, I went directly to Brevard in 1991, and um, I worked there for about 15 years, and had spent a lot of the time there working in a bridgeway, which is an alcohol and drug rehab center right there on the campus of Transylvania. And in 2005, I moved here to Cashers to work here in this clinic, and also work at Highlands Cashers Hospital. Good, very good. So not too far of a journey. No. Uh, we are definitely yeah. glad that you're here. Um, and as you know, April is National Substance Abuse Month, mm -hmm. um, and the national opioid crisis is all over the news. What what can you tell me um, about opioids? Uh, and just very basically, what is an opioid? Okay. Well, opioids are pain medications that are derived, uh, the, or natural opioids derived from the, the poppy plant, uh, which, for which opium was made, and morphine. Um, and then there are a lot of synthetic opioids that have similar qualities that are you know, mainly made in the lab, like fentanyl or the things that you hear about uh, in the news common, now. Common and then the common pain pills that we see prescribed or oxycodone or Percocet and hydrocodone or Vicodin or so many bad names. And what is it about opioids and those derivatives that are so addictive? Well, they cause uh, chemical changes in the brain to, where you will have a release of dopamine, which is a pleasure type uh, neurotransmitter. So there are these chemicals that are released after ingesting the, the medication that make you feel good or have you for it. And so this is a, a reward to you, your brain that you, the body gets and it wants that reward to occur once it goes away, your body wants it back. Makes sense. And then your body can become chemically dependent on these medications after several weeks where you would have withdrawal if you did not get the medication. That short of a time. Yeah. So that's what they call dope sick. And it will happen to anyone taking pain medication on a chronic basis for several weeks. I did not realize that it would happen that, in that short of a time. What has been the traditional treatment for someone suffering from drug addiction? Well, in the past, uh, people have talked about going to detox, that's, you know, mm -hmm. which is just a withdrawal of all the medication. And that's combined with um, you know, narcotics anonymous or some type of uh, behavioral therapy. Um, that's one way. Uh, also, we've had uh, methadone clinics since the 60s, which is a replacement uh, opioid with long-term maintenance. Uh, and then since around uh, 2000, we've had uh, buprenorphine, which is an office-based uh, replacement therapy. And that's in, what I do. In your opinion, um, which one of those three are the most is the most successful? Well, methadone and office-based therapy with buprenorphine have better uh, uh, maintenance rates as far as preventing relapse. We found that the 28-day or detox-type programs will have a higher re relapse rate if they're not followed up with some type of maintenance therapy. Very good. Do you feel like this therapy that, that you're doing in the office, do you think that is the future of treatment? I think it's probably the most rapidly growing treatment, and it's um, where a lot of emphasis is being placed. So I think for right now, I think that's you know, the future. We, we think of ourselves when we live in Highlands and Cashers as being 
um, kind of closed off from a lot of the um, things happening in other parts of the country. Um, from what you've seen, how deep is the opioid uh, crisis in, in, on the plateau? Well, the plateau is part of a Appalachia and uh, where that's kind of the hotbed of the opiate crisis, so we're not isolated from this problem. You know, it's um, a very significant level of addiction to pain pills and uh, opioids. And it's you know, universal around the country, but there are hot spots in uh, the Apple whole Appalachian region is the hot spot from Ohio down to uh, North Georgia, and we're in the, really in the middle of it. And why is that? Why Appalachia? I think it's a lot of psychosocial reasons, you know, with um, you know, lack of employment opportunities probably is one of the, the biggest ones. Interesting. I, I didn't realize that we were in, in one of the hot spots. Mm -hmm. um, and you have clients, you have clients now, you have patients now that are being treated? Yeah, I have around 125 patients that are currently on uh, buprenorphine or suboxone medication-assisted uh, therapy, which is also combined with behavioral health counseling. And have you seen that number grow significantly over the past two, three years? Well, we've had, you know, the DEA regulates the amount of patients that we can have, and there was a, uh, initially a cap of 30 patients uh, back when I started, and um, so that has kind of had been limiting the amount of patients I could see because we have waiting lists that we just can't even get around. To. And you have waiting lists now? Currently, we do. That is sad. Mm -hmm. um, what are the options for these people on the waiting list? Well, they can check, you know, with uh, for other providers uh, for um, buprenorphine treatment within the areas where they live, and you know, there's a physician locator on the website, or they can go to local mental health and ask, you know, for other providers that may have openings. Why do you, why do you think that the United States has been, from what I've read, um, hit drastically with this crisis and other countries have not? Well, the United States historically has had uh, much higher levels of opioid prescribing by physicians for chronic pain over the, probably the last 20 or 30 years. And so our use of these addictive painkillers is much higher than other countries. And I think most people think that is the origin of the problem. Is, is there an alternative for someone who has chronic pain other than you know, an opioid derivative? Yes, that's where it gets complicated. You know, there are non-pharmaceutical uh, alternatives including you know, physical therapy and um, you know, acupuncture and yoga and things like that but it all takes money and support and insurance coverage for a lot of people to um, access these services so um, you know there, there are other alternatives but realistically we've not done a very good job of making these accessible to our patients. Do you think the accessibility will um, change because of the national spotlight on, on the problem? I think it has to, you know, as as we, um, as medical providers, you know, push insurance companies to, to provide this. And if once the, the country realizes we have to do a better job at treating chronic pain, we just can't leave these people out in the cold. What do you feel like is the most um, misunderstood stigma about drug addiction? The, the biggest problem I see is that people consider addiction as a moral failing as opposed to being a chronic medical condition. And that, when that happens, people are treated um, with disrespect and are marginalized. And, um, and that's not, that, that hampers our effective treatment of this problem. Of course. So our mindset on this problem has to change so that we look at these people differently. Yeah, I think in order to, for us to do a better job, you know, feel more compassionate about treating these patients, we need to uh, realize this, this is a medical problem and this is the way to 
brain is reacting to medications and you know, we, we can't control that <clears throat> other than, than treating them properly. Show compassion. Exactly. When, when you have new patients come in who are suffering from drug addiction, um, what's, how, how do you, what do you tell them? How do you uplift them? How do you give them hope? Well, I, I've explained to them the uh, statistics of improvement or relapse prevention with the, the treatment I provide, which is the buprenorphine medication assistance, that there is a very high success rate if they follow the program and um, that there is a good chance that they can get better and have a normal productive life and uh, effectively treat this problem. That is great news. Um, is that program, is that a lifetime program? Well, it's an individual. Um, it's not meant to be a lifetime, but for some you know, it can be for many years of, of treatment. Um, and every person is individual. You know, some people will want to be tapered off. And as long as they're following the treatment program of behavioral health and that their life is stable and they have good support, they may be able to taper off of the medication and stay opioid free. Um, for many folks, you know, I've seen treatment go on for 10 or 15 years, so that's not unusual. And so we have to look at it as a chronic disease that we individualize for the patient. Is, is there any significant side effects? Yes, I mean, um, if, they, if they stop the medication abruptly, they'll have withdrawal mm -hmm. problems. Um, we see a higher incidence of dental decay because of the effect of dry mouth from the buprenorphine. Um, so there are some potential side effects, but the benefits far outweigh the side effects. For someone who has a family member who is suffering from drug addiction, what would you, what bit of advice would you give that family member for that loved one? Well, for one, to have an attitude of this is not a moral failing, but this is a, a medical disease and it needs to be treated appropriately and that there are effective treatments there and they can be accessed through um, you know, local mental health or internet searches about treatment of drug addiction or talking with their um, primary care physicians or providers. So there are a lot of entry ways to, to find help. There is hope. Yes. Very good. Well, doctor, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, spread the word and be here. And I'm sure your 100 plus patients um, really appreciate you and we appreciate you. Thank you. And thank you for watching and make sure you pick up the April Oral Magazine. Thanks.